Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the richest of them all? Elon Musk. No. Jeff Bezos? No. I know, it's gotta be Bill Gates then. No. So it's a trick question. Elon Musk. No, it's none of these guys. Well, if it's not Elon Musk, who is it then? Alright, welcome to this new video. It is estimated that Elon Musk is the richest man living today with a fortune of about $278 billion and then is Jeff Bezos coming in second with $202 billion. You know, the first thing that comes to my mind when I see Jeff Bezos is Ben Kingsley in Sexy Beast. They look very similar. And then it's Bill Gates who only has $131 billion. Now the man I'm gonna talk about today had a lot more than that. Now who was this super rich guy? In order to answer this question we have to go back to the German Renaissance. Now the guy I'm gonna talk about went by the name of, and I have to be really careful about the pronunciation so I'm gonna go with the German pronunciation, his name was Jakob Fugger. Yes, Fugger. <laughs> Now, by today's standard, his fortune is estimated to have been 400 billion US dollars. 400 billion dollars! It's an unimaginably big number, it's a huge sum of money, and how did he get it? What did he do with all that kind of money back in the Renaissance then? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the history of the Fugger dynasty. It was a time writer for the Black Plague, which had devastated large parts of Europe, and especially in Germany, where in some regions, two-thirds of the population had died. So the Fuggers, like many other people at that time, left the rural areas to move to the city in search of a better future. So in 1367, Hans Fugger moved to the city of Augsburg in Bavaria. Now here's a fun fact about their family name. The name Fugger actually used to be spelled differently it used to be spelled F-U-C-K-E-R. Fucker? Seriously? Yes, but actually it didn't mean what it means today in English, in German. So let's just call it a funny coincidence then. Well, anyway, Hans Fugger, he established himself as a master craftsman in the city of Augsburg, and soon his textile business started taking off. So he was making his money with textiles made of silk, and cotton. Anyway, he started the family business and the next generation took over, but it took two generations for Jakob Fugger, the rich one, to turn the family business located in Augsburg into a globally operating company. So Jakob Fugger, arguably the richest man in history, was born on March 6, 1469 in the city of Augsburg. He died on December 30th, 1525 in the city of Augsburg. So he became the most important merchant, banker, and mining entrepreneur of his time. When he was 14 years old, he went to Venice to receive further training as a salesman in his father's company. And then he slowly started taking over the family business. Well, he knew that selling textiles was a very lucrative business, but he found out that it was even more lucrative to go into mining. So what he did was he negotiated a deal with Spain to get the rights to mine mercury there. So in the year 1487, when Jakob Fugger was 28 years old, the company had already become the biggest one in Europe. And over the years, they really developed a monopoly on mining, banking, and the textile trade in Europe. Another very profitable branch of their business was dealing in indulgences. Oh no! Now everyone has heard of indulgences as being a very evil trade of the Catholic Church in order to sell forgiveness. Indulgences? Isn't that the most evil thing the Catholic Church has ever done? The definition follows indulgence, a distinctive feature of the penitential system of both the Western medieval and the Roman Catholic Church that granted full or partial remission of the punishment of sin. So Jakob Fugger really discovered a brilliant opportunity to make a lot of money. So with all this money he accumulated from his various businesses, he was able to actually lend money to the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire himself and finance wars, elections, and even the Vatican's political activities. Needless to say, his power was unimaginably big. Although the Fuggers were just average people and merchants used to have a very low status in medieval society, they quite quickly managed to turn themselves into the most powerful family in Europe. And people always say power corrupts and this also holds true for the Fugger family, as you can see during the peasant wars in the 16th century, where the Fuggers sided with the aristocracy against. 
the peasant movement and also helped to kill thousands of peasants, demanding a better social status for themselves. Now, the Fuggers were not aristocrats themselves. When they started, were just average citizens, but because of their business and their success and all their wealth, they became aristocrats themselves later on. Now, that incredible success story of the Fuggers came to an end after the Thirty Years' War in 1648, so you can say that their dynasty roughly existed for almost 300 years. Of course, with all their wealth and political power, they were on very good terms with the nobility and, of course, also the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. So now you know, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and all the other very rich people are still not even close to the fortune Jakob Fugger had, 400 billion US dollars. So there's still a long way to go for Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates, but maybe one day someone will surpass Jakob Fugger's incredible wealth. Thanks for watching this video. There's more to come, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Thank you.